So you may already know that you have to be in a calorie deficit if you're trying to lose weight, and if you did not know that, then <laughs> surprise. It's really important that you are in a deficit in order to see changes in your body when you're trying to lose weight. If you don't really understand what a deficit is or know how to create one yourself, I do have a ton of videos, basically an entire playlist at this point, teaching you step by step how to do that for yourself. I have personally gotten to pretty low body fat levels for competitions, so I really Really, really know what it takes to have to be consistent with the calorie deficit in order to produce results and I've also done that for many of my clients so I just want to give you these five concrete tips showing you the most important things that you really have to zone in on if you want to get results and be consistent with your calorie deficit so let's start with number one which is to of course have a set calorie number and also have set macros so most people are very familiar with calories but they're not familiar with macros which is totally okay but what you really want to make sure of is that you of course have your calories in line but also have your macros and more importantly your protein lined up so your macros are carbs protein and fat i have an entire video teaching you how to set up your macronutrients but protein is a very very important macronutrient and is something that should be decently high especially if you're trying to lose fat so that's why i want to also mention macros as well as calories so after you create your calorie deficit you also should have set macros that you are going to follow some people like to do high carb days low carb days that's totally fine as long as your protein isn't really getting affected because like i said protein is very important for weight loss so those are the first two things that you really have to establish you have to have a set calorie and macro goal if you do not then it's going to be very easy for you to really just not be consistent and not really know how much you're actually consuming in a day tip number two do not wing your macros okay this is probably like the biggest biggest thing that i have to really like drill into people's heads when it comes to dieting is really just to not wing it even though you have a lot of freedom with your food that doesn't mean it should be a free-for-all and you have absolutely no idea what you're eating in a day and there's no prep involved at all you should treat this exactly as you would with any other diet meal prep in advance know what you're eating in advance or at least have an idea have different meals prepped already ready to go so that you know if you change your mind the next day you can at least say all right well i have this food prep so it's just a quick swap but going into the day blind not knowing what you're doing is really really tough for someone that may be struggling with consistency unless you are you know a pro at macro tracking and you know how to hit your macro spot on every day by just waking up and going as the day goes then by all means do that but i know most of the time with most people who track macros especially beginners that's not really a smart idea and i highly highly recommend planning out your meals in advance in my fitness pal or whatever calorie tracking app you are using just to make it a little bit easier on yourself and again if you want to make changes the day of because you really just don't feel like eating that one thing that you planned that's okay but at least you'll have the majority of your day already planned instead of just completely winging it and ending up going over your calories for the day tip number three i'm probably going to break your heart with this one <laughs> weekends count you cannot follow your diet Monday to Thursday and then completely blow it on the weekend and expect to get good results, okay? The reason being is because if you are creating a deficit every single day, like you're trying to lower your calories and then on the weekend you just splurge and overeat, it's just gonna take you right out of that deficit. And that might really create a very unhealthy relationship with food for yourself because then people get into the mindset of, okay, like now I'm going to like burn it all off on Monday and I'm gonna like work extra hard now to like make up for the calories that I had on the weekend. And that's just not a healthy mindset to get into. So what I would highly suggest is just make the weekends fun but still include it into your plan. Like if you wanna switch up your meals on the weekend, 
Um, even if you eat out or drink alcohol, that can all literally be tracked. At least you can get a pretty good estimate. The problem with the weekends for most people, I feel, is that they don't feel that they could have that balance. Like it's that all or nothing mindset. And that's when the damage is really done because when we go all out and say, oh, screw this, like screw this diet or whatever, like I don't care, I'll start again on Monday. That's when we really tend to pack on a lot of calories because at that point we just give up and we don't care. But that's completely unnecessary because you know even if you have a meal eaten out, you can just get right back to your regular routine for the next meal and move on. So that's a really, really important mindset shift that really has to happen when you're trying to lose fat. In terms of the weekend, you just really, really want to avoid the all or nothing mindset. Even if you, let's say, over ate on Friday, it's okay move on from it. Do not let that one untracked meal or that one bad meal, as some people may say, ruin your entire weekend and cause you to overeat and go overboard for the rest of the weekend and maybe not get your workouts in because everything is thrown off now. Because again, that's really what holds a lot of people back and really digs that hole for some people. So we just want to move on, move on from it. Pretend like it just did not happen. It's done. It's over and start the next meal or the next day fresh as if it did not happen and that can really save you a ton of calories just by shifting that mindset. Tip number four is to really keep tabs on yourself. What I mean by that is really just look into what you are doing. And this is more so if you like aren't really seeing results yet with your calorie deficit, really just look into what you're doing. How many days are you eating out in a week? How much alcohol are you drinking? Is that leading to you eating more food after you drink alcohol, which I know is very common? How many bites of things and you know pieces of things are you eating in a day that you're not tracking? How many gym sessions are you skipping? These are all things that could potentially cause you to not be in a calorie deficit or no longer be in a calorie deficit if you were initially seeing results but then started to slack a little bit in these areas. So I would really keep some sort of a journal or even like a progress tracker to make sure that you are getting your workouts in, to make sure that you are eating the meals that you prep for yourself and keeping track of how many days you are eating out. You know, as I mentioned in the previous tip, maybe if you're eating out three days a week, maybe we could reduce that to one to two days a week, things like that. I know it could be really hard to like be brutally honest with yourself and say like, oh damn, well I've actually been eating out a lot this week. Like maybe that's why like I'm not seeing results. It's really tough to be that honest with yourself and call yourself out on things that might be holding you back. And sometimes that's why it's actually really good to have a coach and to have someone else looking at that stuff for you so that you can get that accountability. That's why I do what I do. But if that's not an option for you right now, then you really do truly have to be your own coach. You have to keep tabs on yourself and see how many times you're eating out, how many times you're drinking alcohol, all these different things that we discussed because that could be the thing that's holding you back from being consistent with your calorie deficit. I have an entire progress tracker inside my course, Weight Loss Without Restriction, that literally covers all of this. It asks you how many times you've eaten out this week, how many workouts you completed, if you were consistent with your calories and macros. It makes it really easy for you to determine if these calories aren't working for you or if you need to work on your consistency a little bit better. I'll leave the link for my course in the description below. It's actually a really, really good option for someone who cannot afford coaching and really just wants to take matters into their own hands and it's very affordable. Lastly, and most importantly, is tip number five. And this is to test it check it and reset it. Yes, I just made that up on my own. So what I mean by that is when you start your weight loss journey, you have to start with a calorie number. And that calorie number isn't really going to be 100% spot on. Like if you do the online calculation that tells you how many calories you should about, you know, be eating in a day to lose weight, that's not really like a concrete number that's just like an estimate so it's very possible that those calories don't respond well for your body and that's why we have to test things that's why we have to have patience that's why we have to be consistent to truly truly know if this is actually working for your body so let's say you start with 
1700 calories. You have to test that out and see if results are actually happening. And in order to see that, that's where the whole check it comes into that equation here. And we have to look at all areas of progress. We have to be looking at our progress photos and comparing them each week. We have to be looking at our measurements. We have to be looking at our average weigh-ins because when you weigh yourself multiple times per week, that is more accurate than just weighing yourself like once in a while because chances are your weight could be higher one day. The way your clothes fit is another measure of progress. So you have to really look at the whole picture here to see if results are actually happening. So we tested it, we checked it, and lastly, the last thing to do is to reset it. So what I mean by that is if you are not seeing results and you were super, super consistent and you're being completely honest with yourself, you're not cheating, then it's very, very possible that what you are doing is just not enough to create a deficit. So the next step for you would be to reset it. So reset your calories, lower them a little bit, maybe increase your cardio a little bit if you don't mind doing some cardio and repeat the process. Do it all over again and see if that will then cause a change. And again, make sure to look at all areas of progress. Don't just look at your stomach because I know that's what everyone does because you may be missing out on some great progress that could be happening in your legs or your arms because you're only looking at your stomach. So that's why I really recommend to look at all areas of progress, have different clothes that you try on every week, jeans, a dress, tops to see how things are fitting you because it's very possible like i said that your jeans might be getting looser on you but your tops aren't really looser yet so you gotta look at the whole picture here all right don't just look at your stomach and be like Mer. i don't see a difference because you could be getting some gains and literally not even realize it because you're so caught up on your stomach. And for most people, that's the last thing to go. So please don't hyper-focus on one area of your body. You have to look at everything. All right, those were my five tips to be consistent with your calorie deficit. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, as usual, put them in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video.